So if you're looking for a travel tripod, there's a few important considerations we need to look at. Perhaps most of all, it needs to be super lightweight, but for me, it also needs to still be sturdy, especially when shooting really long time lapses out in the windy conditions. It needs to have plenty of options and customizations. And last of all, it shouldn't cost an arm and a leg just to get one. Here's why I think this is the best travel tripod on the market at the moment. Let's jump in. So yes, I'm talking about the Ulanzi Travel Tripod. For me, this pretty much ticks all the boxes and then some for a travel tripod. And it's also a lot, lot cheaper than a lot of alternatives out there. So I'm gonna go through all the different pros and cons for this tripod. I have been using this tripod for the past few weeks, traveling around Japan, shooting an awful lot, shooting heaps and heaps of time lapses, and really putting this tripod to the test. It is the only tripod I've brought on this trip other than a little mini one for vlogging. So it really has had a good workout. And as you can probably hear from the tone of my voice, my impressions of this tripod after a few weeks now are really, really positive. Of course, it's hard to talk about this tripod and not mention the Peak Design Travel Tripod, which I believe this one was inspired by. It does share a lot of similarities, but as you'll see in a sec, as a cheaper alternative, I believe this tripod actually comes out on top in many, many different categories for many different reasons. Before we do jump in, let's mention the two different versions this tripod actually comes in. We have the F38 version, which I have here, and also the Zero Y version. The F38 version is quite a unique archetype plate for all Ulanzi F38 products. So sadly, it won't lock into things like your Peak Design capture clip, but the design and way this plate locks in is seriously the best I've ever used. You can quickly and easily secure your camera and know it's safely locked in, and that is why you will need this specific plate for it. The second option is the Zero Y, and this is more of a typical Arca plate. So you have to tighten this one yourself rather than a quick lock-in system. However, this one is compatible with any other Arca devices, so you're able to secure any type of Arca plate in this tripod. To note here, after traveling with the F38 version, I found you can purchase a unique F38 plate that will still lock into your capture clips. Although this is sold separately on the Ulanzi site, it is nice that they aren't totally limiting you to their brand by doing this. Because of how quick and easy it is to secure your camera, I really do prefer the F38 version. But for me owning a capture clip, this was literally the only negative I could find using this version. So I'll definitely need to pick up this extra plate that fits with both. So while here in Japan, I've been walking an awful, awful lot. So having a lightweight tripod is really important when you're lugging around a heavy backpack all day. This is a really lightweight tripod. It comes in only at one 1.1 kilos, which is super light. When I took this out of the box, I was super surprised at how light it actually is. Again, if we compare this to the Peak Design Travel Tripod, it comes in at about 1.3 kilos. So for a tripod that costs twice the price, you're actually getting a lighter one cheaper, which is pretty amazing. Of course, I'm talking about the carbon fiber version of the Peak Design Tripod, it comes in two. For me, 0.2 of a kilo doesn't sound like much, but when you add that to a heavy backpack, it all starts to add up. The next point is how sturdy the tripod is. So obviously the light of the tripod, sometimes you're sacrificing a bit of sturdiness because it becomes a little bit flimsy the lighter it is, but that definitely isn't the case with this Ulanzi tripod. I have found that it's been super, super sturdy. If you want, you can also weigh it down with this little kind of hanging clip when you fully extend it, but I just haven't needed to. You could hang your bag off that, add a little bit of extra weight. Also, when you extend it up, you might find with a heavy camera, it can move around a little bit more. Same as any tripod with this kind of design, so same as the Peak Design one. Probably a little bit sturdier when it is down like that without the center column ascended. I've been shooting big long time lapses outdoors in the wind with it extended. No issues there at all. So that's another big win for a lightweight travel tripod. So the tripod does come with heaps of other options as well. Mine came with this one over four head as well. You can slip that in and secure other different kind of tripod heads as well. So that's really handy. You can also get a fluid head and swap that out for doing video. It is super, super smooth. It is really great. 
And to be honest, it's actually pretty cheap as well. So that's something that you can add on to your tripod to really take it to the next level if you're using it a lot more for video as well. Not only this, there is a few other options that you can swap in and out of this tripod. You can also invert it. So to do this, all you need to do is unscrew this bottom hook, which conveniently also doubles as a little Allen key and then undo it and it will slide right out. So you can put the new head in or you can even put it in reverse as well. So this is really handy if you wanna do things like top downs and invert your camera upside down. Both versions do also have this bubble level which is really handy to make sure you're lining up. It is 360 degrees panorama so you can spin it all the way around and you've also got all the degrees around the side there if you need to set it to specific degrees. Now, the other thing on this tripod, you can extend the legs to three different versions. So we have kind of the standard one. We then have all the clips to extend it out, which are really quick and easy to use, of course. You've got three levels here though. So that's the first one. We've got a second one for a different angle. And then last of all, we have a third one. So the minimum height of this tripod is something like 15 centimeters. And I think the maximum height with the center column also extended is 156 centimeters, which is pretty high for such a lightweight travel tripod. This is a really important one for me when I'm shooting my time lapses. Often it can be over railings or over fences, different types of locations. Sometimes you need that height to get over different objects. So it's really handy having such a light tripod that extends to a height like 156 centimeters. It does also come with a little carry bag, which is pretty nice to have as well. When you don't want to pop your tripod in your bag and you want to carry it around separately, it's really handy having a little bag like this or I pop it in when I put it in my suitcase. And again, having a tripod that only weighs 1.1 kilo, whether you're putting it in your checked in bag or whether you're carrying it around on your back all day, it's just not gonna overload your bag too much or force you to pay for extra luggage weight when you're checking it in. The max payload for this one on the website actually says up to 18 kilos. I'm not sure if that covers the ball head though. This may just be the tripod. So I'll have to look into that a little bit more and I'll probably put the answer up on screen. But overall, I've been shooting with some really heavy lenses with the Canon R5 on this. Super sturdy, no issues, haven't had any problems using the ball head and the plate. Some of these tripods, when you pop them into vertical mode, can be pretty fiddly and annoying. Another benefit I've found with this particular tripod is that when you flip it into vertical mode, it actually has two ways you can go. So you can flip it that way, or you can flip it this way. Most of them only have one, which can make it pretty fiddly, but having two directions is really handy when you're adjusting that angle. For me, when I'm extending a tripod up like this, I usually prefer to use an L bracket. So if you do shoot a lot more in a portrait orientation, that's something you may want to consider. I know for the Peak Design one, I've heard a lot of people say, I have a lot of friends that use it, that it's quite annoying and fiddly to use in portrait orientation as well. And this one, although it has those two options and is relatively easy to get there, if you're shooting in this mode a lot, I always do recommend an L bracket. So if you are looking for a lightweight travel tripod, I really don't think you can go wrong with the Ulanzi options. This is such an awesome tripod. Firstly, because it has so, so many different features. Secondly, you're not paying that much for it. So I do recommend this to pretty much anyone who's looking for a lightweight travel tripod check it out down below i do have an affiliate link there as well if you want to check it out your support is always much appreciated thank you so much for watching keep on creating keep on growing my friends i will catch you in the next one again from here in japan bye for now